How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffled Rallet, and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, today, guys, we have been getting so many things sent, and I want to kind of take a look at these things you guys have been sending me. So, first things first, and that is this message right here from Jake on Facebook. He sent me on my Facebook group and told me, Update, I have found a better worded article that should be simpler to understand about the Pokemon Switch announcement before E3. And then he says, Emily Rogers, Rogers as stated, the Pokemon on the Nintendo Switch will be revealed before the end of this month, maybe next week, whether it will be simply the titles for the games slash game, or a short trailer featuring characters, regions, starter Pokemon, and legendary Pokemon, like they did with Sun and Moon, or a proper full trailer is unknown. So, he then links me to an actual article here, which I think is from VCCF Tech, uh, which I'm not sure what kind of website it is, but they did do a little bit of a piece on it. They actually have two pages here, then I'll also go through the actual post on Emily Rogers' page, so you guys can go through there. But before we go into this, guys, I want to give a huge shout-out to a few people really quickly. So, the first person I'm going to give a shout-out to right here is going to be uh, Kieran Jord uh, Jordan Day, or Ki uh, Kieran, Ki Kieran, Kieran. Uh, Kieran, thank you so much for sh like sending this to me. Uh, Shadows Game Slayer, thank you so much for sending it to me as well. And Brett Rowley. Brett L Rowley as well, thank you so much for letting me know, dude. I appreciate it, guys. If I missed anybody's names, I'm so sorry, but... I'm trying to get through everybody here. And also, Gap na uh, na Navav, Navaf, Gap Navaf, uh, as well. Thanks so much for uh, letting me know, guys. So, four people let me know. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm sorry if I messed up your names. I'm just trying to get into this as fast as I can. So, let's start with the actual post, like, right here. We'll go to the actual page here first. So, Pokemon Switch will be revealed before the end of this month. Industry Insider Claims. Now, if you don't know who Emily Rogers is, Emily Rogers is an individual that essentially has had inside knowledge about previous things. She actually called a ton of information about the Nintendo Switch that was correct. She has been wrong about a few things, but in general, she's been right. She's called the Switch announcement. Uh, she knew what the NX was, aka the Switch. She knew what it was. She was talking about how it was going to work, the hardware, all that stuff. She described it. People didn't believe her, and then she turned out to be real about it, and it was real all the things she said. She's also known about other things. She actually knew about Smash Bros., that was announced like Smash 5 or whatever it's gonna be. She actually knew about it like a, f a week or two ahead of time actually and she called it as well. So she does have some semblance of credibility and I trust her and I believe her. So we'll first go through this article right here. And read to what they have to say here. So, Pokemon Switch is to be revealed this month if industry insider Emily Rogers is to be believed. This weekend, Rogers, who also is an admin of the popular Resetra forums, or, yeah, Resetra, uh, already claimed that an announcement for the upcoming Pokemon title isn't too far off, and it will be released later this year. So... Really not much else beyond that, as we wait for an announcement on the upcoming Pokemon title, which will be revealed before the end of this month, think about how Pokemon Go might mean for the future of the Pokemon series. She wrote, I suspect that the naming slash branding for this year's Pokemon Switch titles, the two versions, might raise a few eyebrows. So, this is very interesting. I have another video later today talking about a potential of these games being called Infrared and Ultraviolet. I've got that coming, which may be what she's referring to here in this, like, eyebrow raising, because you may be like, but we already have Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Why would you have Ultraviolet? Maybe there's something like that when she says, like, eyebrow raising, and I mean, like, hmm, what's, what's going on here? That's maybe what she's talking about. So, also here what's, what's said is, during last year's E3, Nintendo confirmed that the mainline Pokemon game will be released on the Switch, although no further details were shared. As with all rumors, take this uh, about above here with a pinch of salt for now we will keep you updated as soon as we learn more about pokemon switch so it's just an article we have another article actually here as well on uh, my nintendo news i think which uh, also just says emily rogers pokemon nintendo switch will be revealed this month and more information and they actually go a bit more in depth here and i'll actually read through this article as well and then go on to the actual page and read the, the whole question and stuff and all this stuff on her page from there, so we're anxiously waiting to see what shapes, uh, what the shape the first Pokemon main title uh, for the Nintendo Switch will take. Nintendo insider Emily Rogers has information on the title and shared it on her blog. She says that the game will be revealed this month, which is just before E3, which takes place next month in Los Angeles. She says that the team has taken inspiration from the immensely popular Pokemon Go for mobile devices. Now, what this reminds me of when it's set, when they mention mobile devices and that sort of stuff. The first thing that comes to mind to me is that picture, if you guys remember from Pixel Par, where one of the characters is holding a, like, a, a phone which looks like it's got Pokemon Go on it, right? That's what comes to mind to me, because she's mentioning here, like, that it's essentially taking inspiration from the immensely po popular Pokemon Go. Now, Emily said, there's a Pokemon title releasing on Switch in 2018. What we should expect from it? In July 2016, Pokemon Go launched and became a massive phenomenon, having been downloaded more than 500 million times worldwide by the end of that year. 
Then by 2017, overall download numbers increased to over 750 million a year. This all leads to a bigger question. What lessons should Game Freak and Nintendo learn from Pokemon Go's success? How could Switch benefit from Pokemon Go's success? And how could Pokemon Go benefit from Switch's success? So this is the thing that I've been thinking about, because Emily Rogers doesn't seem to have a direct connection to somebody like Pixel Bar, right? She has, doesn't really have a direct connection to him, but she's mentioning a lot of things here that I think are very strange, and the fact that she brings up Pokemon Go, which I was actually reading an article by, specifically, I think, Serebii, or, um, yeah, Serebii, by, like, uh, Joe Merrick, right? And he was talking about, like, how Pokemon the Switch and Pokemon in general should take inspiration from Pokemon Go, and vice versa, how Pokemon Go should take inspiration from the main series games with trading and that sort of stuff, and they should inspire each other to make the best possible product. And the funny thing is, the only time I've seen a thing like this, you know, with Pokemon Go involved in this, like, rumor stuff, is this image right here from Pixel Bar, if you guys remember. So Pixel Bar says here on day 23, he didn't even look at my shorts, and you can see this image has this player up there in the, in the top right corner, you actually see him playing something like Pokemon Go. Now, it could be something different, but it looks like Pokemon Go. That's what everybody was assuming. Could this be connected to what they've been saying earlier? Could this be connected now to why Pixel Bar yesterday uh, tweeted out that whole thing about the hints? Is this connected? Because definitely that's got to be Pokemon Go. And this got to be doing something like that. I don't know. It's very strange to me. I'm very curious as to what's going on now. But um, either way, so... She talks about essentially the success here and then, you know, kind of working off of each other's, uh, you know, good sides and trying to, you know, implement good things from each game into the other one. Um, and then they also, she also says, says here, uh, or rather they say, After all, it was Nintendo who released Pokemon Go Plus, a Bluetooth wearable device developed by Nintendo's platform technology division that allows players to enjoy the game without looking at a smartphone. Would Nintendo ever dare to create more Pokemon Go accessories like that, possibly even for the Switch? Which is very interesting, because we have had the, the little Pokey, uh, Pokey watch thingy, uh, the little thing that you had like... Um, Little Tamaguchi looking thing, right? That you had with Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. That thing you can strap on, you can walk around, you can catch Pokemon outside when you don't even have your device on you, and then you come back and you can put that, like, you can connect it through, you know, um, like an infrared uh, signal or whatever, connect it to your uh, DS back in the past. I should know if I have my DS already. Yeah, here it is, right? You can connect it to your DS, and then essentially you could send over Pokemon that you found out in the wild on your little thing. So we almost had, like, Pokemon Go in the past, but, like, on these little Tamaguchi things, right? So it's kind of weird. But either way, then it also talks about, oh, yeah, they do mention. Joe here, right? So Joe Merrick, the creator of Cerebi.net, once wrote an article on a Nintendo Life titled What Pokemon Go and the Pokemon series could learn from each other. As we wait for an announcement of upcoming Pokemon title, we will be, uh, we will be revealed which will be revealed before the end of this month. Think about the new Pokemon, uh, the way Pokemon Go might mean for the future of Pokemon series. I suspect that the naming slash branding of the, for this year's Pokemon Switch title, there's two versions, might raise a few eyebrows. So this is actually from her article. So we kind of read through these ones, kind of talking about things. Now let's actually read here on Emily Rogers' blog here, which I'll link down below, by the way, if you want to read this on your own and look into it. But she actually says right here, okay, so, Emily, and this is a question to her, right? Emily, you said there's a Pokemon title releasing on Switch in 2018. What should we expect from it? And then she goes on, I'm going to read through this whole thing, give you my opinion, and let you know what she, you know, what I think and what I'm expecting from this. And again, I do trust Emily Rogers. I think she is correct here. But in July 2016, Pokemon Go launched and became a massive phenomenon, having been downloaded more than 500 million times. And we already read through this. And I'm going to skip there too. This all leads to a much bigger question. What lessons should Game Freak and Nintendo learn from Pokemon Go's success? How could Switch benefit from Pokemon Go's success? And how could Pokemon Go benefit from Switch's success. After all, it was Nintendo who released Pokemon Go Plus, a Bluetooth variable device developed by Nintendo's platform en engineers, yada yada yada. Would Nintendo ever dare to create more Pokemon Go accessories like this, possibly even for the Switch? And then we talk about the Joe Merrick, the creator of Serebi.net, you know, doing this article on Nintendo Life, and essentially it was called Pokemon Go, and the, and the Pokemon series could learn from each other what they could learn from each other. And then they go over to, as we wait for an announcement on the upcoming Pokemon title, which will be revealed before the end of this month, is what she's claiming, right? So she's claiming before the end of this month, which means we have literally, I think, 16 or 15 days to work with. Yeah, so 16 days to work with is what we have. 16, guys. 16 days, which is two weeks, essentially. I mean, slightly more than two weeks, but we're working with two weeks of a time where this game could be revealed if she is correct. She's been correct in the past, but she could be wrong here. I'm assuming this is correct based on the things we've been seeing from Pixel Par, the amount of new rumors that have been popping up, and a bunch of other stuff that's been coming out. I think this could be real. But then we go over to the next part of this. So she said, think about what Pokemon Go might mean for the future of the Pokemon series. I suspect that the naming slash branding for this year's Pokemon Switch title, there's two versions, might raise a few eyebrows. So this is where I'm thinking that like, if they're going to be raising eyebrows, it may be because of the, you know, suggested names that we've seen, or not only suggested, but the rumored names that we've seen about, like, Ultra Red, no, sorry, um, 
uh, infrared and ultraviolet, right? That's very strange because, like, they'd be taking, okay, so red, how does this connect to red? Like, infrared, okay, cool. But then ultraviolet, it's very strange, right? It doesn't really make much sense at first glance. So I'm thinking maybe they would do something like that. But it could be something else as well. I don't know, guys. I want to know your opinions there. What do you think about this? Are you excited for the potential reveal of this game that we've been waiting for, the announcement of for such a long time? Are you excited for a potential reveal in the next two weeks? If you are, let me know in the comments down below, guys. I'm going to have another video up today talking about the ultraviolet stuff and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rolf Rowlett. Have a great day. And bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.